Hello, Sunnyside Inn. May I help you? Yes, I'd like to reserve a room for two on the twenty-first of March. Okay. Let me check our computer here for a moment. Okay. The twenty-first of May, right? No, March, not May. Oh, sorry. Let me see here. Hmm. Are you all booked that night? Well, we have one suite available, complete with a kitchenette and sauna bath. Okay. And the view of the city is great too. How much is that? It's only two hundred dollars plus a ten percent room tax. Oh, that's a little too expensive for me. Do you have a cheaper room available, either on the twentieth or the twenty-second? Well, would you like a smoking or non-smoking room? Non-smoking, please. Okay. We do have a few rooms available on the twentieth. We're full on the twenty-second, unless you want a smoking room. Well, how much is the non-smoking room on the twentieth? Eighty dollars plus the ten percent、mm. room tax. Okay, that'll be fine. All right. Could I have your name, please? Yes, it's Bob Maxner. How do you spell your last name, Mr. Maxner? It's M A E X N E R. Okay, Mr. Maxner. We look forward to seeing you on March twentieth. Okay. Goodbye. Personal hygiene involves taking care of our bodily health and well-being through cleanliness. It means that you bathe using soap and water every day and shampoo your hair regularly. Check your hair for any signs of lice and dandruff, and use a medicated shampoo if necessary. When it comes to grooming, always wear clean and washed undergarments, clean and ironed clothes, and a fresh pair of socks every day. Sweaty clothes or smelly socks bother other people around you, and also cause breeding of germs. Always remember to clean or polish your shoes. You must also brush your teeth twice a day and floss once a day to avoid gum problems. Change your toothbrush every three months and use a good quality toothpaste. Use natural mouth fresheners like green cardamom or fennel seeds to keep bad breath in check. It's also very important to keep your nails clean and trimmed at all times. Dirt can easily accumulate beneath long nails and cause bacteria to breed. Dirty nails not only look terrible but can cause food poisoning and other diseases too. Another very important thing to do is to wash your hands with soap and water before and after eating food, after using the toilet, and after coughing or sneezing. It's a good idea to keep a hand sanitizer handy for when soap and water are not available. Let's look at a scenario to understand the importance of good personal hygiene and grooming. Sam has recently joined a retail store in the sales department. He notices that customers approach him for queries, but they appear uncomfortable and then go to the next counter. Because of this, Sam's sales are suffering. He approaches his friend Chris for advice. Chris, I am quite worried about not being able to make any sales. Customers come to me, but then they quickly go away without making a purchase. I think I know what the problem is. Um, apparently you haven't been paying attention to grooming and hygiene. What do you mean? See, you haven't shaved for many days, and it looks like you need a shower. Your body odor could be turning customers away. Um, actually, I had been keeping busy the last few days and didn't have time to take a bath. Well, if you don't shower or wear sweaty clothes, everyone can smell it, even from a distance, Sam. But what can I do if I sweat a lot and end up smelling even if I take a bath? You can use deodorant on your armpits every day after you shower, Sam. But remember to not use too much because the fragrance then gets too much and can make other people uncomfortable. Oh, I didn't know that. Anyhow, now that you have seen how your lack of grooming and hygiene is affecting your work, you must promise yourself to take care of it. Thank you, Chris. Hi, how can I help you? Uh, I'd like to get a souvenir for my wife. Something special from this area. Okay. Well, how about this nice pearl necklace? It's locally sourced from the nearby sea. Uh, yeah. Let me see that. Oh no, oh, no, that's way too expensive. I'm not going to spend a hundred and twenty dollars for something like that. Okay. How about this nice watch? Oh, oh, that's way too expensive. Plus, she already has a watch and a phone. So she can check the time of day whenever she likes. 
Okay, um, what about this nice shirt? It's made with traditional designs, local tailor, only $30. Well, oh, oh no. <sighs> Let me guess. It's the price. Is it too expensive? Well, it's, well, kind of. Didn't you say this was for your wife? Shouldn't you be getting her something nice? I mean, come on. Hey, if you're suggesting that I'm cheap or something, I'll just well, I'll just go to another souvenir shop. They'll probably treat me a lot better than you are. Yeah, good luck. They what? they all closed while you were carrying on. I mean, we closed 15 minutes ago. Oh. You can pick what? up something at the airport if you want, but they'll charge you an arm and a leg. Oh, um, whoa, 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 whoa. wait, wait. How much is this candy bar? She really likes chocolate. Are you serious? This is the Snickers bar. It's not even one of their special novelty flavors. You can get this literally anywhere. How about this box of nice chocolates? They're Belgian. Uh, I mean, that's not local, but they're nice. No, 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 no. Whoa, no, 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 Look, no. Just take it. What? I'm done. At least I can do a save your marriage. Hi, Tim. Hi. I'm really sorry to hear about your dad. My sincerest condolences go out to you and your family. He was such a great man. Thanks. As you know, he had been sick for some time before he passed away, so we were somewhat prepared. So, how's your mom taking it? Oh, it's been really hard on her. I don't think you'd get over something like that. Yeah, I'm sure. My heart really goes out to her. Thanks. Uh, so, how is your mom going to be able to manage things alone? Well, financially, Mom will be able to live a secure life from now on. I mean, Dad had life insurance and substantial investments in property and stocks, so returns on those should take care of her. That's good to hear. But our main concern at this moment is her emotional state. Yeah. She's really down, so a call now and again should brighten her day. So, what are the funeral arrangements? The obituary in the paper didn't mention much about the funeral. Well, some of the family members will get together on Tuesday morning for a private memorial service, but there will be a viewing in the afternoon from 2 to 3, followed by a funeral service. One of my uncles will be giving the eulogy. I wish there was something I could do for you. Well, actually, there is. Oh? You know, Dad really admired you a lot, and before he died, he asked if you'd sing a musical number at the funeral. Really? I'd be honored. It would really mean a lot to the family. Sure. Then, see you on Tuesday. Okay, see you then. Hi, uh, haven't we met before? You look so familiar. Yeah, we met on campus last week. Yeah, and you yeah. asked me the same question. Oh, oh, really? I'm sorry, but I'm really terrible with names. But, 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 let me guess. It's Sherry, right? No, but you got the first letter, right? I know, I know. It's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, wait, uh, Sandy, Susan... Nope. So I was that memorable? It, wait, wait. It's Sharon. You got it. And only on the fourth try. So, well, Sher I mean, Sharon, how are you? Not bad. And what was your name? It's Ben, but everyone calls me BJ. And uh, what do you do, uh, Sh uh, Sharon? I'm a graduate student, majoring in TESOL. A TESA? What's that? It stands for Teaching English as a Second Language. I want to teach English to non-native speakers overseas. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty good at that English grammar, you know, verbs and adjectives. And, uh, hey, that sounds really exciting. And do you need some type of specific degree or experience to do that? I mean, could I do something like that? Well, most employers overseas are looking for someone who has at least a bachelor's degree and one or two years of experience. Oh. And what do you do? Are you a student on campus? Yeah, but uh, I guess I'm mulling over the idea of going into accounting or international business, but I guess I'm leaning now towards a degree in marketing. Oh, uh, well, I have to run. I have a class in 10 minutes. Oh, okay. And uh, by the way, there's this uh, dance on campus at the Student Center tonight, and uh, I was wondering if you'd... Uh, you know, like uh, to come along. Oh, really? Well, perhaps. Okay, well, bye. Most fascinating wedding traditions. They are as varied and unique as the way couples exchange their vows and say, I do. 1. Breaking of the glass. This Jewish wedding tradition is observed by seeing the groom break a glass under his foot towards the end of the ceremony. Some trace the roots of this tradition to the destruction in AD 70 of the Temple in Jerusalem. 
Others claim it serves as a reminder that the joy of marriage should always be regarded as tempered. 2. Jumping over the broom. A joyful tradition in the West African country of Ghana, jumping over the broom by the bride and groom as the couple's way to sweep away the evil spirits and the mistakes done in the past. The one who has jumped the highest is believed to become the head of the household. 3. Dancing while covered with money. Originally from Cuba, this unique and highly profitable custom is also common in Poland, Greece, the Philippines, and certain parts of the southern United States. After the formal ceremony, the bride and groom do their first dance as a married couple. While dancing, guests would be pinning money to their clothes. 4. Painting the hands. Prior to her wedding day, the bride in India is joined by her family and female friends in decorating their hands and feet with a henna paste. They would create elaborate designs for hours which are temporary and would last just a few weeks. 5. Changing the wardrobe up to three times. Brides in modern China get to pick up to three wedding dresses. The first dress is traditionally red in color as the Chinese regard red as a strong and lucky color. The second dress is usually a white ball gown that shows an embrace in Western trends. The third dress is a cocktail dress with the color personally chosen by the bride. Amazon Rainforest Facts The Amazon is the biggest tropical rainforest in the world. The forest is spread over 5.5 million square kilometers. It is so vast that it is found in northwestern Brazil and further stretches out into South American nations such as Peru, Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Guyana, Bolivia, Suriname, and French Guiana. Amazon forest is the home for dangerous species such as the cougar, jaguar, and anaconda. The Amazon River flows through the north of the rainforest. Many people believe that the Amazon rainforest produces 20% of the world's oxygen. The rainforest is so dense that sun rays cannot penetrate the floor. The forest is the home of 40,000 plant species, 3,000 types of fish, 20% of the world's bird species, 430 species of mammals, and 2.5 million different species of insects. More than half of the Amazon rainforest, almost 60%, is found in Brazil. About 400 to 500 native Amerindian tribes live in the Amazon rainforest region. What do you think about this apartment, Tom? Do you like it? I love it. When can we move in? Really? What do you like about it? Well, for one thing, the living room is huge. It's much bigger than the one we have now. That's true. This apartment does have a lot more floor space. So, when can we move in? I don't know. I haven't decided if I really like it that much. What? Why not? Well, the rent is a little high, and it's a little far from your school and my work. The commute will be a little longer. But Mom said it would just take an extra ten minutes. That's not very long. Yeah, I guess so. I'm not so sure about the kitchen, though. It's a little small, and there aren't many windows, so we wouldn't get much sunlight. Well, it's not perfect, but it's not bad. After all, it does have an extra bedroom. That could be my playroom. Or my exercise room. When's the building manager coming back? He said he would be back in a few more minutes, so we still have time to look around a little. Hey, what door is this? Oh, it's a closet. If we do decide to live here, I hope the neighbors aren't too noisy. Okay, so we've looked at all the bedrooms, the kitchen, the living room, and even the closets. Yeah? We forgot something. What? The bathroom. Where's the bathroom? Huh? I have to go to the bathroom. Where is it? Good afternoon. How can we help you? Good afternoon. My name is Mrs. Hobbs. I want to get my car serviced. Okay, sure. When was the last time it was checked? Uh, about a year ago. Okay, then we will give it a full service. I have a free slot on Thursday if you have time to bring it then. Uh, what time? Um, around 9am. Uh, oh, that's perfect. But I need the car back by Friday morning. That should be fine. If there is a serious problem with the car, though, we might need to order new parts. Then it will be a bit longer. 
How long does a full service usually take? About three hours. But as I said, it depends if there is a serious problem. Well, I think there is a problem. The oil level seems to be dropping, so I think there might be a leak. Well, we'll find out what the matter is when you bring the car in. Okay, good. I have a few more questions. The last garage I went to charged me a lot to change the windscreen cleaner liquid. I hope you do this at a good price. Oh, absolutely. Good. Oh, I've just remembered. The rear brake light on the left side is broken. Uh, don't worry, we'll fix that. And the check on the brake pads is all part of the price? Yes, this definitely won't cost you any extra. Maybe you just went to an expensive garage. Mm, I think you're right. I've got a good team here, so we'll get the car back to you as soon as possible, at a fair price. Glad to hear it. See you on Thursday. Goodbye. Goodbye. Pluto, the planet that wasn't. Poor Pluto. It's bad enough to be the runt of the group, but to be told after 75 years that you're not even a member of the club? What an insult. Pluto was first discovered in 1930. Until 2006, students were taught that it was the ninth and smallest planet in the solar system. Smaller than Earth's moon, it is not even as wide as the United States. Pluto is made up almost entirely of rock and ice. It is so far away from Earth that the NASA New Horizons spacecraft took almost 10 years to get very close to it. Pluto's full orbit around the Sun lasts almost 250 Earth years. But as small as it is, as cold as it is, as far from the Sun as it is, for all those years it was considered the ninth planet of the solar system until Eris came around. Eris was discovered in 2005. It is about the same size as Pluto, and like Pluto, it is part of the Kuiper Belt, a ring of objects that circle the outer edge of the solar system. After Eris was discovered, scientists had to make a decision. Either Eris was the tenth planet in the solar system, or it was not a planet at all. And if Eris wasn't a planet, could Pluto be considered one? Scientists made new rules for what is counted as a planet, and decided that neither Pluto nor Eris qualified. A new category was created, dwarf planet. The official lists of planets in the solar system went from 9 to 8, and Pluto and Eris became members of the dwarf planet club. So long for planet Pluto, but at least it no longer has to be the littlest guy in the club. In fact, Pluto is one of the bigger dwarf planets. Maybe Pluto doesn't have it so bad after all. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to today's show. And joining me today is my daughter, Ashley, who has had to endure my cooking experiments over the years. Are we ready, Ashley? Ready to eat. Well, let's wait for a few minutes. We'll get to that. But as you know, my faithful listeners... I started cooking and baking almost 30 years ago when my grandmother taught me in her humble kitchen. In fact, she taught me almost everything I know, and I've never attended cooking classes. You should have. Wait, wait, wait. I know my daughter's going to mention to you faithful listeners that recently, as I was helping the kids prepare for our kitchen for a chicken meal, I forgot to take the chicken out of the oven, burned the bird to a crisp, and we ended up ordering pizza for dinner. We had to use a fire extinguisher. <laughs> but that's another story. So anyway, today I'd like to share with you our favorite, at least my favorite, chocolate chip cookie recipe. Now, before you switch the TV channel, I know what you're thinking. Another fattening cookie recipe? But wait, what makes this recipe great is that it offers a wonderful low-fat, low-calorie, Low cholesterol dessert for the entire family. We still like the fat, though. <laughs> well, I know we do, but let's say um, we have all the ingredients, and so we can start by mixing all of the ingredients, the sugars, the flour, the egg whites, the low-fat butter, vanilla, baking soda, and a pinch of salt in a large mixing bowl. Then we add the mini chocolate chips. Now, my kids would like me to add the big ones, but... We start with the mini chocolate chips. And 
don't forget to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. And finally, when the cookies are done, take them out of the oven, remove them from the cookie sheet, and let them cool before their fingers get into them. Did I forget anything? Yeah. If you have college-age kids, be sure to make a few extra batches they can take back to school for their roommates. And don't forget, the kid's still at home. Oh, well, yeah, we can't do that. We can't forget them. And, unfortunately, by the time your kids get the cookies, you, the cook, will be left with a single cookie, your instant diet plan for you, and a dirty kitchen. So, that's all for today. On next week's show, we will be showing you how to feed hungry teenagers on a budget without having to sell the family car. Until then. Excuse me. Yeah? Uh, I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm completely lost. Are you from here? Where are you trying to get to? Well, I was looking for the art museum, but I think I've taken a wrong turn somewhere. I think so. You're miles away. Really? This always happens to me. Directions are just not my thing, I suppose. I think the best thing is to take a bus. It'll take ages if you walk from here. That's a shame. I wanted to walk around and get a feel for the city. I wouldn't worry. There's nothing to see around here anyway. Take the bus into the centre and walk around there. It's much more interesting. Okay. Um, where can I take the bus? It's about five minutes' walk from here. You see that hotel on the corner there? The one that says Royal Hotel? That's right. Go down that street to the end, then turn right, take the first left, and go on until you see a junction with traffic lights. Go over the junction, keep going straight, and you'll see a bus stop on your left. Go to the end, first left, turn right at the traffic lights. No, 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 no. Go straight on, past the traffic lights. Oh, yes, and then... It'll be on your left. Right. Got it, I think. Well, you can always ask someone else. Good luck. Thanks. Dad? Yeah? I need a few supplies for school, and I was wondering if... Yeah, there are a couple of pencils and an eraser in the kitchen drawer, I think. Dad, I'm in eighth grade now. Oh. And I need real supplies for my demanding classes. Oh, so you need a ruler too? Dad, <laughs> I need some high-tech stuff. Oh. Like a calculator, mm -hmm. a Palm Pilot, and a laptop computer. Uh, I didn't have any of that when I was in middle school, and I did just fine. Yeah, and there weren't any cars either, were there? <laughs> oh. And things are just more progressive now. Well, we can rule out that hand pilot. Palm Pilot, Dad. Oh, whatever. And the computer, unless Mom lets you sell the car. And as for that adding machine... Calculator. Oh, yeah. I think mine from college is kicking around here somewhere. Dad, I need a calculator for geometry. And I have heard you can download free software from the Internet. Great. My daughter will be playing video games in geometry class. Dad. Okay. How much is this going to cost me? Well, I saw it at the store for only $99. Ooh. With a $10 mailing rebate. Ooh. Or you could buy it online. Oh, do they throw in a few aspirin so your father can recover from sticker shock? Dad, please. Everyone has one. I've heard that one before. And you've always said you wanted me to excel in school. Hmm. And I'll chip in ten dollars of my own. Hmm. And I'll even clean up my room. Hey. Hmm. A hundred bucks. Well, you'll be supporting me in my old age, so I guess. When do you need it? Now. Right now. now. Right Mom's now. Mom's already waiting in the car for us. She said she would buy me an ice cream if I could talk you into buying it for me today. Oh, no, I can't believe this. Oh, uh... man. I remember, I remember the house where I was born. The little window where the sun came peeping in at morn. He never came a wink too soon, nor brought too long a day. But now I often wish the night had borne my breath away. I remember, I remember the roses, red and white, The violets and the lily cups, those flowers made of light, The lilacs where the robin built, and where my brother set The laburnum on his birthday. The tree is living yet. I remember, I remember where I was used to swing, and thought the air must rush as fresh to swallows on the wing. My spirit flew in feathers then, that is so heavy now. 
and summer pools could hardly cool the fever on my brow i remember i remember the fir trees dark and high i used to think their slender tops were close against the sky it was a childish ignorance but now tis little joy to know i'm farther off from heaven than when i was a boy in 2008 the gross national happiness committee was formed in bhutan to take care of the people's inner peace bhutan is the only country in the world that has an official ministry of happiness they believe gnh or gross national happiness is just as important to measure as gdp also known as gross domestic product in 2015 they organized an extensive survey interviewing people about how happy they are even the census questionnaire has a column where you can indicate whether you're satisfied with your life or not the result of the 2015 survey showed that 91 percent of the population consider themselves happy and 43 percent are deeply or extensively happy the quality of life in the country is determined by the balance between their financial and mental values. Good evening, I'm Jed West and this is the 6 o'clock news. Headlines London has won the race to host the Olympics in 2012. Estonia has elected a new president. Hurricanes Maxwell and Nelly have struck the east coast of America, in particular the Florida Keys. Thousands expected to be injured. Manchester United have signed the prodigious young talent Brilinho from San Paolo for a record 42 million euros. Chi Chi the Panda has given birth to twins in Berlin Zoo. Officials announced early this morning from Singapore that London beat close rivals Paris in the race to host the 2012 Olympics. Many people had expected Paris to be the city honoured with the Olympics, but in a surprise twist, London, following the eliminations of New York, Moscow and Madrid, emerged as victors. Spokesman Georgia Smith said, It's a great day for London, for England and the United Kingdom. We will make this an Olympics never to be forgotten. Polling stations in Estonia closed just a few hours ago, but it seems clear that Vladimir Shevchenko has already secured enough votes to become the new president. His election campaign was very controversial in that he promised to privatize all Estonian industry and use the money raised to invest in schools and hospitals. Exit polls indicate Mr. Shevchenko took almost 72% of the vote. He is currently preparing his acceptance speech and is expected to assume power within the next 48 hours. Once again, the southeast coast of America and the Caribbean are suffering the effects of hurricanes. The latest two to hit are Maxwell and Nelly, and yesterday wind speeds of up to 180 kilometers an hour were recorded, causing millions of dollars of damage to homes, roads and ports. The US government has issued an evacuation order, and since yesterday evening the freeways have been jammed with worried residents looking to escape from the hurricanes. Sport and the world's richest football club, Manchester United, yesterday signed young Brazilian star Brilinho for a world record 42 million euros. The player, just 18 years old, signed a five-year contract in the Manchester United boardroom in front of the world's cameras and microphones. Speaking through an interpreter, he said he was very excited to be playing in the UK but would miss the sun and, above all, the beaches of Rio de Janeiro. Finally, good news at last for the endangered panda. This morning, just before 10 o'clock Central European time, Chi Chi, the giant Chinese panda, gave birth to twins, a male and a female, in Berlin Zoo. Chi Chi, who has been in captivity since 1994, is said to be well and clearly happy to have finally become a mother. And that was the 6 o'clock news. Join me at 7 for the latest headlines. I'm Jed West, and thank you for listening to Radio 4. The weather means different things to different people. I come from England, so the weather is always a big topic there. People in England can't deal with the weather. A tiny bit of snow and no one goes to work. Two days of 30 degree temperatures and it's a heat wave. Three days and it's an emergency. I once lived in Dubai. No one really talked about the weather there. It was the same almost every day of the year. Hot, 
sunny, blue skies, no rain. I never looked at the weather forecast. I always knew what the weather would be like. Not like in England where people pray for the weather to be okay. But the weather is changing. Global warming is making it rain in the desert and dry in the rainforests. Hey taxi! Ah great, thanks for pulling over. Where to? Well, I'm going to the National Museum of Art and... Sure, hop in. No problem. Hang on. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me, how long does it take to get there? Well, that all depends on the traffic, but it shouldn't take more than 20 minutes for the average driver. Oh. And I'm not average. I have driving down to an art, so we should be able to cruise through traffic and get there in less than 12 minutes. Okay. Uh, yeah. sorry for asking, yeah? but do you have any idea how much the fare will be? Oh, uh, it shouldn't be more than $18, not including uh, <coughs> a tip, of course. Oh. And by the way, do you know what time the museum closes? Well, I would guess around 6 o'clock. Oh. Do you have the time? Yeah, it's half past 4. Thanks. Uh, this is your first time to the city, right? Yeah. How did you know? Well, you can tell tourists a mile away in the city because they walk down the street looking straight up at the skyscrapers. Was it that obvious? <laughs> well, uh... Oh, before I forget, can you recommend any good restaurants downtown mm -hmm. that offer meals at a reasonable price? Mm. Well, the Mexican restaurant La Fajita is fantastic. Oh. It's not as inexpensive as other places I know, but the decor is very authentic. Okay. And the portions are larger than most places I've been to. Sounds great. How do I get there from the museum? Well, you can catch the subway right outside the museum. There are buses that run that way, but you would have to transfer a couple of times. And there are taxis, too, but they don't run by the museum that often. Okay, thanks. Thanks.